free of the building, the danger. It looks like that we have many preliminary work things. There will be uh, our regions in terms of the time of July the 3rd and the three voting periods and so there we will finish the building based discussion program. At that time, when you step up to the mic and introduce yourself, step up to the mic and introduce yourself. I'll start timing you. You'll have three minutes. I'll let you know when one minute is left. And uh, then we'll go from there. And I'll let you know when your time is run out. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Director Braybury, if you would, um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Aycock. I'm pretty loud, so I'm not even really sure if I need to use this, but I'll go ahead until you all tell me to stop. So my name's Mike Sprayberry. I am the Director of Emergency Management and the Deputy uh, Homeland Security Advisor for the state of North Carolina. And as such, uh, I am responsible um, for the recovery, really the response to the recovery, the mitigation, you know, all that stuff. Stuff, disasters, all hazards in the state of North Carolina. Um, currently, as you probably know, we're doing disaster assistance in the western part of the state for landslides and flooding. We just got done with doing tornadoes in, um, in Guilford County and Rockingham County, but I'm not here to talk about that tonight. I'm here to talk about... I'm going to take this from you. You're good to go. Okay, so I'm good to go. Can y'all hear me? All right. So. Anyway, like I said, uh, we're here to talk about Hurricane Matthew and the, and the Hurricane Matthew recovery. And so I'm going to run through some slides for you, but I'm going to do it pretty quickly because I want you all to have the opportunity to basically ask any questions that you have. So I don't need to tell you all that, um, you know, you got a lot of rain back on October of 2016. These are what I consider to be the meeting objectives. I read a couple of stories in the, um, the Argus, and um, I figured that maybe y'all wanted somebody like me to come talk to y'all and to um, uh, what, about what we're doing at the state level and also answer questions. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, as my wife often tells me, I do not know everything. And so uh, the things that I don't know, I'm going to toss over to my team over here, and they are going to uh, take those questions down, so, and, and I'll need, of course, to get uh, your contact information so that I can respond to you with the details, because I don't want anybody here to leave tonight uh, that you don't have your question answered or that you know that you're going to have your question answered shortly. We agree on that? Okay, good. So, y'all pretty much know about the impacts. The thing that, that resonates with me is that we did have 31 people lose their lives uh, during Matthew. And, you know, I really feel blessed to have this job because I feel like I get to make a difference each and every day. And so what we try to do every day is try to build capability to per always keep the numbers down. If we lose one person, that's, that's one person too much. Um, you can see the numbers there. I'm not going to read everything to you, but I will tell you that 3,000 people stayed in uh, FEMA transitional sheltering assistance. And that, in other words, they stayed in hotels, right? And uh, that program ended, um, but uh, now we still have some folks in mobile homes uh, there's, we had 161 in eastern North Carolina that were in mobile homes. Um, now we're down to nine. There's three of them that are right here in Wayne County. We anticipate most of those folks being moved out by the 10th of July when that program is, ends. My commitment to you and to the rest of the um, local governments is that uh, emergency management is not going to let anybody in those mobile homes get kicked out. So what are we doing? Um, we've already got over $632 million on the ground. Um, everything from individual assistance, which uh, we helped 26,000 uh, families. Um, there was national flood insurance program. Um, we have a public assistance program. I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a minute, but uh, that's primarily uh, roads, bridges, debris removal, emergency protective measures, water plants, uh, sewer plants, um, parks, things like that. And so 
a lot of money's been put out there, over $632 million, and, and that's probably not accurate because it, we spend a little bit more money every day. We've got a team that's churning. And you need to know that even when we're having other disasters, I've still got a team that's in there, the same team, and they're just working away to make sure that this is moving forward, even though we may be dealing with something else or a new disaster. Um, recovery initiatives. Um, we are working with the Community Development Initiative to create more affordable housing. We've done about 311 um, units. Um, we're uh, working really hard on that. I'm real proud of that. We helped do a land bank in Rocky Mount with uh, 50 houses. Um, we've done a, a Hurricane Matthew Disaster Recovery and Resiliency Initiative where we went to some towns with low capacity. Uh, we went to Seven Springs. And um, we were proud to work with those folks. We have done a flood retrofit study. North Carolina Emergency Management paid for that. And now we're trying to find the funding in a grant so that we can implement the retrofit study. Um, and, then, and also with their town hall and things like that. And uh, we want to make sure that we get them in a good place. Still got a, li a little ways to go, though. Um, river basin flood mitigation studies, that, that's huge. Um, we did uh, river basin studies uh, for the tar, the noose, the lumber, and then the disaster rental assistance program. And this were, these were for folks that were coming out of the hotels that didn't have enough money to put down a deposit, get utilities, and pay rent for the first couple of months. So we, we did that. It wasn't used here in Wayne County, but it was used extensively in other places. We're getting ready to roll out a new program so that um, folks that are out of their homes and they're waiting for rehabilitation, uh, repair, um, elevations, uh, buyouts, and they're also renting a place where they live now, what we are going to do is we will offer a program where we will uh, pay the rent because we know a lot of those folks are still paying mortgage on the homes uh, that they're waiting for all that stuff to go on. So we have funding for that. You'll be seeing that in the next week or two. So the Wayne County Public Assistance Snapshot. Uh, you'll remember I just mentioned that uh, that was mainly uh, roads, bridges, uh, debris removal, things like that. So Wayne County itself was eligible for $9 million. Uh, we've currently paid out $5.9 million. And what that means is, is that it's a reimbursement process like most federal grants. And so as the work gets done, uh, the county turns in the invoices, and then we pay the county. Um, a lot of times, money doesn't have to change hands necessarily if the invoice can get in quickly enough. Goldsboro, 3.5 million, paid out 2.1, and Seven Springs, 313,000, paid out 5,000. The, the deal there is that we're still working closely with Seven Springs to determine what they want to do at their town hall. Um, Something that I think probably everybody's interested in, um, the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. And so um, that's pretty much for buyouts, um, demolition rebuilds, or elevations. So basically, this has been the largest hazard mitigation program, Matthew, is since Floyd. It's been the largest funding allocation since Floyd. Um, we had an enhanced hazard mitigation plan in our agency, so we were able to get $25 million additional dollars and help out 210 more households. So bottom line is uh, 800 folks, uh, well actually almost 3,000 folks applied, but we only had enough money to take care of 800 families. Because on average, uh, a hazard mitigation project cost about $125,000. Um, and so we worked pretty quick to do that. I know that that's a relative term. It doesn't seem quick to you, and it really doesn't seem quick to me. But um, we've been working hard, and I'm going to go through that with you. Um, and I know you all have been patient with us. And so I met last week with the Hazard Mitigation Program from FEMA Region 4 in Atlanta on the 4th. Um, they did tell us, that's what I just said, the ha largest hazard mitigation fund and allocation for North Carolina ever. Um, we're going to, by the 30th of June, every project 
uh, it's less than $1 million we should have received all of those. And so a project contains several houses. And so the project for Wayne County, it's all buyouts, and there's 84 of them. It's $8.7 million. So that's not going to happen to 31. I mean, we could get it earlier than 31 July, and I anticipate get it in th earlier than 31 July, but that's the, the drop-dead date that they gave me. And so the reason why it takes longer is because these big projects over a million dollars, it's a federal requirement that they go to the Office of Management and Budget in Washington, D.C. for final review. So that's what you got right there. So here's the snapshot. I just said it. 84 households submitted for buyout in one application. $8.79 million. Um, so we expect the project award to be on 731 or sooner. Um, I want to tell you that uh, your local folks here were very robust and they did some great intake processes. They knew what they were doing. Uh, we helped you uh, wrote the grant proposal, but your guys and gals were very aggressive, so we appreciate that. So to give you an idea about what's happening right now, is on my way from Raleigh to Goldsboro today, I received on an email that we got eight more awards for $2.4 million for 17 houses. Um, they're not for, obviously, for Wayne County because they're less, these are all less than $1 million. So total right now, in the past couple of weeks, as FEMA told me, we're starting to get all these awards. Right now, we've received 27 awards for 150 households for $21.7 million. So it's starting to ramp up pretty quick. So um, I'll just be honest with you. On the way down here, I prayed that I would see something from Fort Wayne County come today. Didn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. But uh, we are going to push and feed, get those grants down here because we know that you need them. So this, we, okay, so this is what, before I got the email today, this is where we stood. I couldn't change my slide when I got here, but uh, we had 19 awards. And, and those are some of the places um, that, um, you know, that have gotten them. Camden, ha you know, you, you can see those. And so um, Green, anybody here from Green County? So Green County got theirs today. And so... Um, so that's good news, right? And so some of the hard-hit communities like Edgecombe, they got theirs a couple weeks ago uh, up there. Um, so they're starting to come. So I thought it might be useful to explain the hazard mitigation grant process. And I'm going to tell you all something. You know, for me, you know, it's hard for me to memorize all this stuff because it is a somewhat bureaucratic process. But you know the feds aren't going to give you money just just give you money i mean they're gonna make you turn in the paperwork sign things and things like that and so and you know just think about when you turn in for tax returns and things like that so this is how it goes so uh, there's a letter of interest that's required so there's a notice of funds availability they call it a nofa and a letter of instruction were sent out to all 50 of the declared counties in january 2017 because you know, when you get hit in October of 2016, I mean, we were still recovering. We were activated at the state EOC, you know, for, for weeks and weeks. And we were not only dealing with Matthew, but also fires. And so, it, it, you know, but no matter if we weren't dealing with the fires, still it takes a while to spin up this program. Projects of interest had to be submitted back to emergency management not later than the end of March. Um, and then those were for expedited projects to move faster. And then May 1st for project mission timeline. If you all might remember back in April of last year, we got a flooding event. And so we extended the timeline for a couple of weeks. So then uh, what we did is we worked with folks like um, Mr. Crumpler and others to open up uh, disaster recovery centers for hazard mitigation so folks could come in and make an application. Then uh, we determined we had about 3,000 folks that needed HMGP funding. Now, for HMGP funding, 3,000, 
I mean, you, you're saying, hey, Sprayberry, you just told me you had, you know, all this money, $115 million. Let me tell you something, divide $115 million by $125,000 apiece, and you'll see that it comes up way short of $3,000. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit later. But um, anyway, we developed criteria to select who would get uh, chosen for the first 800. So we wanted to make sure that we were getting a place to live um, and folks that had uh, structures that had uh, really bad damages. Um, and so, and also we wanted to work with our local partners so that they could tell us who needed it the worst. Um, then we made notification. Y'all probably remember those of you that got selected. I think I wrote a letter around August of 2017 where I wrote a letter saying that uh, you, made, you were selected for the program. Then we, we decided in order to move the program faster that we would write the grants for the local communities because places like Wayne County, they have good people that work in planning and emergency management that know what they're doing, but there's a lot of other places that have just a very small amount of folks, and so we wanted to make sure that everybody got their grants in on time, so we, we created uh, all the 65 grants for the 800 properties, and we submitted every one of them except for Princeville. Princeville right now is still making some decisions. So what happens when those grants get down to FEMA? So it goes through a programmatic review, a technical review, an environmental review, a historical review, a tribal review, and finally a financial obligation. They don't have very many people working on it, and you'll remember that a lot of things happened last year in 2017, but we requested that uh, FEMA surge some additional staff so that they can be looking at these things because we've got people that are waiting. and so. Like I said, now we're starting to finally see some of the fruits of the labors here. So once awarded, we're going to get a, a grant agreement. We'll get, and then we'll conduct an implementation meeting with our local partners. Uh, we in, once we get a grant award, it's our metric to meet with everybody within 30 days of getting that letter, so we can go ahead and get you started. Um, <clears throat> all the projects have to be completed by October 2020. Obviously, you want to do them faster than that. And then the eligible costs are reimbursed through a cost report process. So I wanted to sort of dig down a little bit deeper into this. And so, you know, a lot of people think that once you get, well, first of all, the state doesn't get any federal funding until we receive the project award letter. So right now, we don't have any funding for Wayne County. Today, for Greene County, we did get funding. So that's, now that's, that starts that clock. So, but we don't have it for Wayne, not yet. So once the award letter is received, we'll start going through these steps, a written agreement with the county. Now, this written agreement in the old days went through snail mail and had somebody's desk here, somebody's desk there. Now we do it electronically through DocuSign, so it can be done in a day. And so we like that. And so we have the implementation meeting with the county. And then there's other work to be done because it's just like buying your house. And so that's a pretty big deal. I mean, when you buy a house, you got to have an appraisal, title work, surveys, and then you go through the closing. And at the end of it, they'll demo the house and turn it over to uh, green space and perpetuity. Now another one that is new for us, the Community Development Block Grant for Disaster Recovery. So, you know, before... Um, last year, North Carolina had, in all the different times that we got any of this kind of money, when you add it all together combined, was $20 million or, or so. So, but mostly it was like maybe a million bucks here and six million bucks there. And it was managed by the Department And so the Department of Commerce reorganized in 2013, and they pretty much got rid of the people that um, managed that grant. And so we found out at the end of Matthew that we were getting a lot of money from CDBGDR, but there was nobody that knew how to execute the money. I mean, the folks in commerce, they were gone working other jobs, and so they asked me would I be willing to take it. And so, you know, I'm a good soldier. Roger out, and here we go. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm going to, 
I will stand here tonight and tell you that we have had some issues rolling this program out. And I will accept the responsibility for those issues. But I can also commit to you that we are making the turn and we will soon, like during this summer, we are going to get to where we need to be and start getting money out there. One of the things uh, there's, you know, that were unfamiliar to us, first of all, I had to basically gather a big staff and train them up and, you know, hire them and train them. And we're still in that process right now because, uh, you know, it's, it's a process. There's not many people that know about community development for block grants for disaster recovery that's just out there. Those people are mainly contractors, and they're mostly at these big disasters, the other disasters. We, have, we are starting to get some now. So the first allocation that we got was for $198 million. Then we got another allocation for $6 million. Then we got another allocation for um, about $32 million. So there has been put out in the news in a federal register that, that we are going to get another $198 million. And it didn't really say how we can, you know, how to implement it or anything. But one thing that it did say is it can be used for focused on mitigation. So remember that, because I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. That's $198 million for mitigation. And that should mean something to people that maybe missed out on the original 800 FEMA uh, projects because if I told you there's about 3,000 people that need it. So that means that 2,200 folks went without. So what's happening to those other folks? So stay tuned. I'll talk to you about that. So these are some of the programs that we have right now. In fact, those are the programs that we have right now. Home program, most, uh, many of you have been applying for these programs um, and it's slow because what we're getting hung up on right now is we're waiting for our environmental reviews to be completed and we're waiting on our duplication of benefit process to be completed. We anticipate those being done about the same time that the, uh, all the grants for hazard mitigation are going to be awarded. So that's what I'm saying. I'm looking, I'm wanting to have a good summer here and, and, and get all this money rolling and get it out on the streets. I mean, I know we've got, you know, around $650 million out there, but we need to get all this money out there as well. So any of you have, uh, that have applied um, for the HUD money, which that's where the CDBGDR money comes from, it is a process. I have seen the process, and, you know, you, gotta, you go, go in with an application, you got to bring in all your, um, your documents, then it goes through an eligibility review, then it goes through a duplication of benefits check, then it goes through an inspection and environmental review, and then if you're only asking for a reimbursement for, for repairs that you've already done yourself and you've saved those receipts, you can move on to uh, getting reimbursed. But if not, if you're wanting to get a contractor in to build your, rebuild your house or something, then you got to go through the other steps. And so, but we are working all that out. We anticipate having that done pretty quickly. And so, um, and when I say pretty quickly, not too quickly for you, that's something that I clearly understand. Um, so here's, I don't even know if you would even have interest in this, but you know, even when they come out and they tell you that you have this money, we don't, we're not allowed to touch it until we write a state action plan to tell them how we're going to use it. And, um, and, and then we have to turn it in, and then they approve it. And on average, across the nation, that's about nine months. So I had a conversation with the FEMA administrator, and I also got a chance to meet with uh, Secretary Carson from HUD in Fayetteville. I mean, in whose mind is that a fast process, right? I mean, it's disaster recovery. You need the money now. So they're actually taking a look at making some changes, not because of what I said. I just saw some legislation at the federal level, and they're wanting to, uh, so a lot of the, the congressional folks, and what's really brought that to the forefront 
is all these disasters that happened in 2017 because they're struggling with it just like we are. Not the only state that's tr struggling. So we have 205 applicants for the CDBGDR funding. We have 151 applications that have already been reviewed. Um, I will tell you, of all the counties um, that have intake centers, um, Wayne County has the lowest amount of applications that have to be returned for additional work. So that's kudos to Wayne County. And so, um, but again, we expect the date of completion of environmental review is gonna be around the 1st of August, end of July. And so that's gonna be our real kickoff for us to start moving. So what does the road ahead look like? So we have delivered some, um, some checks and awards, and we have some actions ongoing. And, I, and one thing I'd just like to tell y'all, I mean, you know, I know that y'all are frustrated, frustrated as can be, no doubt about it, I understand it. Um, we're pretty frustrated with the CDBGDR program because it's new to us and we are learning. Um, but I'm gonna tell you something, we're motivated and we're the people, we don't quit. We're gonna figure it out and we're gonna get there. And out, we're going to turn it into a best practice. Right now, uh, we have uh, reimbursed uh, a lady in uh, Robinson County for CDBGDR, so that's already happened. We've used uh, Disaster Recovery Act of 2017 for um, for repairs in, in uh, a county. We've got 15 projects in a couple of counties for rehabs and repairs using DRA 17 money. And the ERA 17, that's Disaster Recovery Act of 2017, where we got allocated some money to do these types of things. We also have um, 33 uh, Disaster Recovery Act 2017 hazard mitigation projects. And the reason why we can do, go faster on them is they don't, we don't have to send up to FEMA to be reviewed, right? We just do that right here in the state. You know, we, we, you know they meet the same standards we just don't have to send them to anybody. So um, uh, many of those are in Bladen County. So uh, starting to receive in the hazard mitigation project awards fast and furious. And so, you know, I mean, I, I, got, I got a bunch yesterday. I'm talking multi-million dollars are coming in fast. And so that's a great thing. So this is the, uh, the long-term recovery timeline. Won't spend a whole lot of time on that, but uh, you know, during Hurricane Irene for the hazard mitigation program, you know, I told, I wasn't the director then, but I told the team now, I said, whatever we do, we gotta be faster than we used to be. And so um, our metric, we went 33% faster with more. We got 10 times the amount. Um, we're trying to get um, all of those award letters to be gone in the next six weeks. Um, and also, when those letters go out, our metric is to have a meeting with the local partner within 30 days. And we're going to stay with you from the beginning to the end. Am I right, Ryan? Roger that. So CDBGDR, we're working on that. We delivered the, the first check. We're working on the others. Um, I got to tell you, even though, even if it was the best, it would still be problematic because of all the paperwork that you got to turn in. And if you think about it, <clears throat> and I often do, if I got flooded out or just not even totally flooded out but damaged, how hard would it be for me to gather up all of my paperwork, you know, out of a damaged household? I, I mean, there's got to be a better way, I, and I'm not saying that I have the better, I got some ideas on that, but you know, they're not listening to me right now, but apparently somebody's doing something at the federal level. Um, but we, we worry about what happens right here in North Carolina, and then DRA 17, we're working that. So a couple other real quick things I want to tell you about, just so that I make sure that I don't forget, and I talked to you about that there's three mobile home units that people are living in their FEMA mobile home units, and I don't know if they're here tonight. And so, um, but whoever they are, I don't know their names, 
I'm making a commitment, and I have made this commitment over and over again in public, on television. You know, uh, I told the governor, I wasn't sure if I had the authority, but I told him, I said, I, didn't, I, I thought that I was saying something that he would want to say, is that we are not going to let anybody, you know, get kicked out of a mobile home. We'll take care of it. And so he concurred with them. Seven Springs, we know that we need to focus to help you guys out. Um, we appreciate all the hard work y'all put in, and um, we want to get that town hall going and figured out, and, and I got to find some money to help uh, retrofit you guys for the flood. Um, we have disaster case managers uh, in here somewhere. There he is right over there. And so what we are doing is we're sort of redirecting those guys to go to the intake centers so that they will be able to pro provide additional help. Because here's the thing, you don't ever need to feel like nobody cares and nobody's going to do anything. Um, I, now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you a big story that I answer all my emails like right when you send them to me. Because typically, an email that I might get from somebody like you is going to be something where I got to do some research and it'll be a little complicated. Because one thing that you've probably figured out, I might not be an expert that knows about all the widgets. Now, I've got a pretty good understanding of it, but that, what I'm telling you is that if you send me an email, I probably have to go to my team and get them to help me craft an answer that will be to your satisfaction. Um, so I wanted to tell you that. Um, but disaster case managers will help you out. The other thing is a lot of people... We get a lot of people complaining about um, duplication of benefits, and they say, well, you know, I would never do that. I would never, you know, and, and you probably wouldn't. You probably wouldn't try to get paid twice for the same amount of work. But what we don't want to do is, because of somebody's lack of understanding that, um, that you get awarded certain amounts of money from different places, and then when some auditor comes, they tell you that, you know, you weren't eligible for this funding, we're going to deobligate and take back $10,000 that we gave you after years. I mean, that's not what we're wanting to do here. We want to make sure that you're protected as well, and that's why that steps in there. So, um, you know, so here I am, and I'm ready to answer your questions, and yes, sir. Do we? So, um, Ryan, do you have that list? Uh, I will in just a second, sir. Okay. In the 100 year flood plan over, over the bar, man, we got flooded twice. 2017, which I didn't get flooded, uh, uh, flowing from it. Matthew got me. But uh, I just want to verify that's all the reason I'm here today. Roger. The only meeting I've been to since we've been having all the meetings. Right. Well, I, I appreciate what you said, and uh, although I will say this, when you said that um, I'm 69 years old and you'd know about that, I mean, I was wondering how to take that, but, uh, <laughs> but, but believe it or not, I'm not too far off your age, but I do some, we'll have, we'll find out in just a minute, so thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? Right. Um, my name is Ron Jacobs, uh, formerly of 119 Hood Drive, out towards Grant. Bought a new home in Goldsboro. Um, so two things. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for coming down here. Yes, sir. I feel like most of us feel like we've been kind of forgotten, and that that's the main thing I'm here for. Secondly, is, is this number? Uh, everybody keeps saying, "Well, I'm number 15. You know, I'm number 22. I've, I've done all the paperwork. I don't have a number, so I need to see if I need a number." So, did you get a letter from me saying that you were approved? Absolutely. So, 
If you got that letter, it doesn't matter if you're number 15 or number 83, you're approved. I'd like a number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the number's on an Excel spreadsheet or something, but... No, it's just uh, my parents and I... Uh, yes, sir. ...beside each other. My dad as well. Roger that. And, uh, and we've had to, you know, that house is very inhabitable. Um, something else, too, I'd like to ask you real quick if I can. Uh, and I don't know if you can answer this, but it's frustrating to still have to pay mortgages and insurance. Taxes. And, you know, I went through SBA and got my loan, and I'm not going to keep insurance on a house I can't live in because SBA requires that. So you, that's not your appeal, though, right? It's what I, I do know about that, but it's it's something that I don't have power over. It's tough. I mean, two, <clears throat> two years it's going on. There. Yeah, Roger, and I got it. And so... That's why we're pushing hard. And so I got to tell you, I'm not normally the guy, and I was telling my team this, I'm not normally the guy that, that uh, raises a lot of cane because I feel like we get good service with FEMA and stuff. And I still believe that. But, but, and I think that FEMA has done a good job here, but I have told them that, you know, we're past the time. It's time. And it's project award letters. And so... Um, and I told them that a while back, and so I think, you know, and I couldn't tell you if, because I said that, now they're coming. There's no way to know, but, you know, they at least told me that they would redouble their efforts, send in extra personnel, and so we're now starting to see some of that. So I understand that frustration, and I would ask you, hey, did you get his name too? Yeah, thank you. Okay, yes, sir. I have something from here, and I also live on Hood Drive, but my husband Carlton and I are one of the three that still live in a FEMA mobile home. And we have had our, um, I call it the eviction letter to get out because they're saying we have to be out by July 10th. The month of May, we had to pay $756 for rent. Um, come next month, if we're not out by July 10th, there's going to be $550 added to that. And we don't feel like that it's fair for us to have to pay that. We are working on trying to get a new home. And we've had our other home already demolished. We had a little money from the ICC left over from our flood insurance money. But I'm really struggling with having to continue to get those letters kind of threatening that if you're not out and what they will come <coughs> back and do to get that money. Uh, from your Social Security, from your retirement, if you have a tax refund coming back. There's a lot of things stated in those letters, and, you know, we, that's kind of a threat to us. Yes, and so <clears throat> I got I to gotta, I gotta tell you that I agree with you. And, you know, when I've had conversations with those folks, that, there's a word I have for that, but I'm not going to use it here tonight. And so, um, but what I will tell you is... Um, You've got my email address, and I would ask Diane if uh, you would sort of take her name and address down. You're one of the prime candidates for our temporary rental assistance. And, um, and so, but first of all, we got to understand that everybody's a family and that we can't be threatening people that are in the worst of circumstances. Um, and you're not going to get a letter like that from me, and I will talk with my FEMA counterparts. Well, it came from FEMA, but we did have a call from your office uh, threatening to be transitioned out of our home, and I said, where is that going to be? And the gentleman said, I can't tell you that, but you will be transitioned out of your home. So I called back to your office or to the state emergency management's office to try to handle that. And the gentleman called me back that afternoon and was very rude, very ugly. Do you know who he was? I sure do. I have names at home for, I, I got some good notes. So uh, send me that email. And so, you know, we'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. My name is Bill Cox and I'm a real estate. My grandparents owned and operated Godfather's Barbecue here for almost 60 years, and they lived in their home for almost 60 years, and they got flooded out. This is more than just a financial situation. Before the flood, my grandmother was driving. She was cooking her own meals emotionally now because she's been transitioned to several houses. 
she's not able to drive anymore. She's not able to cook anymore. Um, I've been told that she is going to participate in the buyout because I've been trying to handle all of her information. But I do not remember getting no letter. And it could be because she, I moved her from her home to my mom's home right her to a couple other places until she's at where she's at now. So I don't know if information got lost or, you know, I don't know if mail got sent to an old address. So if, if you could, if you could just go over there, sir, and talk to Mr. Uh, Ryan Cox. He's my hazard mitigation guy. And what I would just give him your name or actually give him your grandmother's name and um, he'll look it up. Yep. One of the things I didn't really say, um, or maybe I did say, but I just want to make clear. <clears throat> so we got $115 million in FEMA money for hazard mitigation, right? In this current allocation of disaster recovery money from HUD, we've got another $25 million. So in last year's state uh, allocation for disaster, uh, we got, you know, I think it was 20 million. This year, effective 1 July, we'll get another 25 million. And then when HUD sends out their next allocation, there'll be 168 million. So is there anybody in here that applied for the 800 or applied for hazard mitigation projects and didn't get selected? If, if you raise your hand. So um, if you applied, we still have your information. And so there's a good chance if that you were eligible, we can find the money to take care of you. You know, I can't make that commitment without seeing the paperwork because, you know, you, I wouldn't want to do that anyway. You got to see the paperwork. <clears throat> but there's an opportunity there. In the end, there will be about $400 million for mitigation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Helen Morrell, and I'm not from here, but I'm speaking on behalf of Willie Wooten. I have been running back and forth from Virginia to take care of you and taking him back and forth. He lived on 203 Woodrow Drive, which is going to North Carolina. And it's kind of hard for him. He's an 80 year old, he's not in his home. I had to take him out because they don't have running water and everything about his home is just disaster. And I reported that back in December 2017. And I've been talking to him and they say they're going to do something sooner or later. But this man is in a condition that he can't help himself. And I feel like, you know, it would be soon and very soon. He need help or else I don't know what to do because I'm running back and forth. I have a daughter live down here and we let him stay from her house to my house in Virginia. And I live four hours drive. I drove down this morning just in automatics because I've been calling and talking and wondering when they're going to get things going. They say you're in the third stage. In third stage, I don't know what they're talking about because he don't have running water. His home is not livable. As I told them on the application, everything is just a disaster. And I do feel sorry. I have a heart for that man. I do need help. And I was just wondering when is they going to try to do something for him. So if you would, if you would um, go over there and provide his name and his address. And so I can see an opportunity for us to work together with our local partners and also with some volunteer agencies to maybe see. Because I don't think that, you know, for somebody like him, it's, I mean, we're right around the corner from it, but right around the corner is right around the corner. We need to do, you're saying we need something to do something now. Right, ever since April of last year, I've been driving back and forth. And that's a four hour drive one way with no help. If it wasn't for him once in a while, give me help me out to try to help him out. He don't have no way of fixing his food or anything. And he's 80 years old. He's going on 81. And he is from here. He's from here. If, if ma'am, if you just give his name um, yes, and address, yes, we'll. Okay, we'll do. We'll work. I'm Marjorie Steiner, and I'm from Seven Springs. I'm on the FSF Seven Springs. We were flooded in Florida, and I'm getting Matthew. Some of my husband's flooded in Florida, the whole first floor, and Matthew. Uh, we've been living somewhere else ever since. We've been repairing it at our own cost. Uh, a lot of life savings when you're 82 years old. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
We applied for a grant previously and was told that we were a great contender, being in Seven Springs, we were so loved, uh, but we did not receive any money because they decided to give it all to buyers and none for elevation. We're not asking for a buy or you know, fix our house. We just want to be elevated because we're sitting there getting ready to move into a home that we've just fixed all up, and in September we'll probably get flooded again. And there we start all over. We would really like to be elevated. And I'm going to bring the elevation money. It seems like it's all elevation by the reason I was focused on acquisitions and buyouts is because um, <clears throat> those were the 84 projects to that got approved for Wayne County. We, we're still doing elevations. Yes, we are. And so if you will tell them what you just told me and write that down, and also make sure you can, you can take my uh, email address and you know, you can, we'll, we will make sure that you get considered with other funding. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. And, and Diane, make sure you get that it's Elevate, please. Hello. Good evening. My name is Ada Cole. Okay, I'll go. First. Oh. Okay. Uh, my name is Love Ada Avery. Uh, I am from Johnston County, and I noticed on your snapshot you didn't have Johnston County on there. And I would like to know who do I talk with about the hurricane damage to my uh, house? Or can you direct me to the right people or instruct me? My house has, nothing has been done to my house. I can't move back in there because of the air quality and other things. And I went through the steps. I filled out an application with FEMA. FEMA did give me some money, so I went down the steps for the, um, Small business. SBA loan? Yes. If they have been struggling to pay it back and try to get the house repaired, the, I need more money to repair the house. I had to get things out of the house and try to establish what was in the house and <coughs> buy storage space to put it in. It has really been a struggle. So where do I go from here? So if you will give your name and address to the table over there, where, have you talked with your local emergency manager? Well, I've been everywhere to a lot of agencies, the senior citizen agents, <coughs> the FEMA, they came out. They uh, gave me, uh, they checked everything, and I did receive a small amount from FEMA that will not repair a door. Right. If you would, ma'am, if you just leave your name and address, too, and a little bit about what you're asking about, and we'll follow up with you. Everybody needs to leave their contact information on there, too, right? So when you got up there and started, started to talk, she started to talk, and I looked, and your lips weren't moving, and I kind of wondered what was going on there. Good evening, ma'am. And I do appreciate our local leaders. I was told to talk closer to the microphone. <laughs> and they, I think they have worked as hard as they can, and we really, really appreciate it. My name is Ada Coley. My husband's name is Bruce Coley. Our address is 205 Winslow Circle. That's right off South John Street. There are many houses off, off South John Street that are in dire need of help. There are some for sale signs on them. Some still have condemned signs on them. My husband and I have filled out many forms and are waiting for the return funds we have already spent on house repairs. We have been told we will have to elevate our house. I am 75 years old and it's a job, it's a task to get up the steps I, we have now. I, uh, and we are looking forward to additional 
additional voluntary buyout funds to become available. Go, Goldsboro News Office, June 3rd News Office paper. Are you ready? Hurricane season can be more active than normal. Red Cross, prepare now for hurricane season. And this really calls us to relive what we have gone through. The hurricanes that really flooded our area. And we know that we are in a flood area. And we are asking and we are praying that you please, please consider and help us before the next hurricane comes. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, would like to get your name too, ma'am, and contact information. Yeah. Um, Sorry. I'm Ray Urban with the Long-Term Disaster Recovery Group. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Volunteer group here in Wayne County. Just wanted to be sure everyone knew where we're located. We have some funds. We've been <coughs> up and running since November of 2016, helping folks, um, working closely with the North Carolina Baptist men, repairing homes, buying air conditioners, putting roofs on homes. We're located down at the Salvation Army. You can come in there and we'll, we'll see if we're able to help you. So I'm just hearing some of the stories, some of the folks that have stepped up, sounds like maybe we might be able to help them a little bit until they get where the big money comes. We don't have a ton of money, but we have got some funds that are there. It's all volunteers, so we can stretch a dollar along. Roger. So. And, I, and I think you, you're right. I think for some of these projects, um, just to bridge over until the big grants come, it would be helpful to have volunteers. Yes, sir. This is very, very, my name is Krishna Prasad, uh, resident of Wayne County. Everybody said that it was a 500-year flood plan. Nobody told me it was a 17-year flood plan. I would not have been there. Um, I'm right there with you, man. Um, the, um, the house has got to be torn down, elevated. So we applied, my wife and I, we applied for um, buyout. And we have had a letter from you guys uh, last year. Um, we have been bugging the city officials here almost on a monthly basis, and we're told that we should hear something by July or June or so I'm hoping. I have two concerns. One is that we moved out of the house. We've been living out in another house now for the last two years. I'm glad there's a county commissioner here or was here. Um, He's back oh, there. Oh, good. good. Thank you. Uh, is for these houses where we cannot live anymore. I've been to the property tax office and they try to drop the prices down a little bit, but that's about it. We cannot live in this house. I feel that the property taxes should be down to nothing more than the value of the lot, but I've not been able to convince them. Hopefully, I don't know whether you can do anything about it to talk to these guys or you know, help us all out. We're still paying taxes. I understand. Our gentlemen still paying on houses, you know, rent, um, insurance and all that. And um, this really could be helpful. Yes, sir. I hope you heard me. I think you heard you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Tiana Adams, and I stay on 108 Hazel Street, and I was also flooded out and still out to know how do you go about getting extra assistance. The only assistance that I received is when FEMA first got here, and that was a couple of thousand dollars within the first two. But I hear people saying, I'm on a list. How do you get on this? Because I'm just like a couple of other people, I'm a single parent, I have two kids, I'm paying for a mortgage and taxes in a house that I cannot live in, and I'm also trying to maintain where I'm staying now, and it's hard paying two mortgages, and you're not getting any help for two years when it's kind of like 
thought it was going to be maybe up to a year, but two months, that's kind of hard. I mean, two years is kind of hard. So how do you, or where do you go to apply to get extra assistance? So, so are you approved for the hazard mitigation grant program? I, I don't know anything about that. That's what I hear people say that, and I'm like, where did you go? Who told you about this? I just happened to see this on the news, and I actually was like, well, let me by the grace of God that I think I saw it. And I'm just here and I keep hearing people say, I'm on this list, I received a letter. And I'm like, how do you receive a letter? What do I do to see if I can get assistance when the time is available? Right, so what we'll do is we'll, if you'll give your name and contact information and what the issue is to my team over there, we'll work with the local officials and that's the start as you work with your local county officials. <clears throat> Do you live in the city proper? Or actually, you start working with your city officials and, and ask them. But I'll be willing to work with them to find out what we can do for you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, good evening. Hey. Thank you first and foremost for coming down here. My name is Viola Rouse Figueroa. And if I could just take a few moments to indulge you of what has gone on in the last 20 months of my life. On December the 2nd, I went down to the Veterans Center on Ash Street to fill out the paperwork. It was a two hour window appointment time. However, it took me 25 minutes of filling out the 35, 40 page application. In February of 2018, I got a phone call saying that I needed to come back down and fill out additional paperwork to the VA center. And I said, so my application hasn't been sent up to Raleigh yet? They said no, but don't feel bad because there's also 250 other applications that are still sitting here. Went back down in February, filled out the paperwork. Come April, I get another phone call. Miss Figueroa, we need you to come back down and fill out more paperwork. And I'm like, my God, what is On February the 3rd, 25th, 2017, I moved into the FEMA trailer. I am still the second of three that is living in the trailer. One of the first paperwork that was given to me to sign before they gave me the keys was this health form saying that I could not go after the government for any type of health issues that would arise from me living in that FEMA trailer. Three weeks of living in that FEMA trailer, I had to sign on paper for my husband to be put in an induced coma in ICU. I said that to say, since we have been living in that FEMA trailer, my husband has been in ICU four different times and has been to the hospital every month because of congested heart failure and fluid in his lungs from living in this trailer. I am allergic to mold. Because this trailer was not well put together, water began to leak behind the sink. And I started getting really ill. And my mom said, why am I having to keep mopping this floor? I called out the month FEMA maintenance people that are paid to come out and take care of it. And the pipes weren't even connected. They connected the pipes, which constantly still keep coming apart, and they still have to come out there and repair monthly. I have this big stain of where mold is. Now, I'm not just talking. I have pictures to back up what I am saying. Lutheran Services contacted me mid-year last year. I don't know their purpose. They are truly getting paid by whomever to do absolutely nothing. 
the gentleman for long-term recovery group at Salvation Army, from what I understand, are volunteers. They have been a godsend to my family. They have done more as a volunteer than Lutheran services have done that are supposedly getting paid for the job. My mother has retired. She's 70. My husband is a disabled veteran. I am on disability, have been since 2004. We do not qualify for several of these programs, these grants. We are literally falling in between the gap because of our income. The <coughs> rental letter that this lady is getting, we too have gotten those letters. My rent for staying in a FEMA trailer was $1,100. Then it, he came down to $982. Then they told me if I go back and get utility bills from 2015, that will lower the rent. It then came down to $760. As of July, my rent is going to be $1,580. Why? Because my mother instilled in me to work. My husband served this God, she retired. And so therefore, I'm sorry I'm getting a decent check on disability. My husband is getting a decent check from the VA. My mother's getting her retirement check. We are now being penalized. The family home that we live in, we lived in, that I still see every morning, every day, the tax value is only $22,000. That home is like 70 years old. Thank you. I just wanted you to know a brief history in my life for the last 20 months. Thank you. So, Ms. Figueroa, yes. what I'd like you to do is to give your name and contact number and make sure that you let them know that you're in a, in a mobile home unit, okay. a FEMA unit, right? Okay, Thank okay. thanks. I gotta get a drink. Oh, thanks. There's one right here. Thank you, Mr. Strayberry. My name is my aunt. I'm here representing her. She lives in or lived in Seven Springs. Um, has most of her life. Um, I, just, I guess I just need some clarification tonight. Um, this was her family home that she lived in, and. Um, she has always had flood insurance. Okay, her flood insurance did pay, and she was able to um, move into a home that she had built out on um, her property. But my understanding from FEMA is because she had flood insurance, that that's going to be deducted from the buyout. Okay, but she. You know, I, I guess it, I feel like she's being punished for doing what she, you know, for carrying flood insurance for over 40 years. Right. You know, she also went through Fran and Floyd and, you know, this um, Baptist men house. She didn't even use the flood insurance money at that time. So I feel like she's being penalized for having flood insurance. So flooded, you know, insurance is the first line of defense, right? And so, um, I mean, you have the flood insurance, you have the damages, and then you either rebuild that house that you're in or you move away. I'm guessing you said she moved away? No, she just moved a mile down the road because she happened to have But farmland. she moved into she a, to, build a house? Right, but, you know, the, she's, she's got a couple acres down in South spring home that could never be lived in, you know, because she's penalized because she has flood insurance. And I guess I just need some clarification, you know, is that fee, is that what FEMA is planning to do as far as a buyout? Yes, we will buy your home and property, but we're going to deduct her flood, what she received from flood insurance. Right. That's right. Well, what can I do? She's 96, so, you know, um, yeah. it's still going strong. Right. I mean, her mind is good, you know, she, 
that she's had to have around clock care because she she fell when she was staying with my mother before she got her in the So she had flood insurance. Correct. Her insurance paid off. Correct. She was able to either build or buy a new house. Correct. And so she's, you know, yeah, that's... I mean, yes, we're... What, once again, she, she did what she was supposed to do carrying the flood insurance, but it feels like FEMA is penalizing her because, you know, they're not going to give her that much for her home. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do because we haven't heard anything. Right. Um, but, but my understanding was that they are going to, you know, deduct the, that. They will. That's, okay. that's the... She probably will end up with nothing, so that, I'm saying, from the buyout. Well, that's the law, and I can't change the law. Okay. One more question. She owned a small home um, house right in front of this other house. She didn't. She dropped the flood insurance because the flood insurance was more than she was receiving for rent. And my understanding is there, there's nothing. Uh, is there anything she could do to claim that house? There might be a program in the DR program. So if you would be nice enough to leave me your name and number or, or email a little bit of the issue with my team over there. We'll get back to you. Okay, thank you. Well, there's Miss Diane right there. Yes, sir. Good evening, Director Strayberry and Charles Wright. It's good to see you again. Yes, sir. It's good. the third time I've seen you visiting Goldsboro. I just uh, <clears throat> want to bring up a couple of things. Uh, I've been trying to help people in my community a while with all the different grants. And, and one of the things that I did want to talk about is both the Community Depth Development Grant has a buyout provision and FEMA has a buyout. A lot of people, 325, originally signed up for the FEMA buyout. Out of that, only 80 people were selected. And a lot of people have been asking me, well, Mr. Wright, can I apply to the CBG buyout in this other program, even though I signed up for the buyout but wasn't selected in the FEMA program. Do it. It's better to have two applications for your buyout than to just to have one and be waiting on FEMA buyout money while new people is getting CBG funds buyout money, if all that makes any sense. So, so, well, the short answer is you done good. Okay. That's the right answer. And so, um, you know, you, you got thousands and thousands of people that have issues. And so we had 3,000, I'm talking about with their ho households. And so we had 3,000 make application. You just said there was 325 just around here. Only um, 84 got selected. We didn't have enough FEMA money to do it. We didn't know we were getting all the rest of this money. So now the rest of this money's coming in, and we're going to have the opportunity to, my hope is, my fervent desire is, is to take care of all 3,000 households. That's the goal. Second part of my question, well, not a question, but observation, <clears throat> our local center here in, in, uh, in Goldsboro, I asked them about that. I said, we had 200 people that didn't make it this round. Have these people been contacted? to let them know, hey, come in and apply for this CBG money. And the gentleman said, well, Mr. Wright, I can tell you, we have not seen anywhere near 200 people to apply. So what's that telling me is locally and possibly to stick with state's help, we need to make a better effort to let those people who didn't get selected in the first round for buyout by FEMA, let them know they can come to and, and fill out an application for uh, buyout money from the CB Community Development Block Grant Fund, and then let you guys sort it out where you're going to get the buyout money. It's going to be the FEMA when that money comes. Yeah, you guys don't buyout. care. So it's whatever. I'd like to see if, if that action could be either taken by the state or take the lead in it, and at least send them a postcard and say, hey, you must select in your county, apply for this program that's available, and I think that would help. And the only other observation, I won't take up all your time. As far as the tax statement, I brought that up about seven months ago in our county commissioner's uh, meeting about that tax. What I was able to do, and I can't speak for the county tax office, 
you should have gotten something to say the amount of money which you're damaged, whether it's eighty thousand dollars of damage, fifty thousand dollars. So po postcard outreach on hazard mitigation. Company, I took that to the tax office and said, here, I got X amount of damage to this house. I want you to reduce the tax rate on that house by the amount of damage. Seventy-five thousand dollars worth of damage. Then you take seventy-five thousand dollars worth of value off that tax bill, and then I pay the rest. And that worked out fine for me. I'm not paying nothing, but I'm, I'm comfortable with what I'm paying for in the house. I haven't been in it over a year, so I won't take any more of your time. But thank you for coming. Yes, back. sir. And I'm, I got some good takeaways from what you just said. I'm sorry. I, I'm bouncing back and forth. I, I'm Linda Morgan, and my husband is Ronald Morgan, and we're from Green County. I understand there was a meeting in Henson with you last week, and I'm going to ask you to come back. You know, I don't know if you know the So, so the meeting in Kinston was for county and city officials. Okay. It was we didn't have any of the public there. We we're just giving them. I give updates not just to the public, but also we let the county and city officials know so they know how to work with y'all. And so I told, Bear, I will tell you, um, Barry stood up for y'all, and uh, and so he did a great job. We. We had a wrong number on on there, and he he squared us away and and did it. So, anyway, um, yes, ma'am, I understand what you're saying. And also, the homeowners insurance that we're still paying on our homes, we're being penalized because the house is empty. Yeah. And that's why we Took a toll. I take five blood pressure pills a day, and I know it's because of <clears throat> worry and the mold. I, you know, I, I, you know, it's just not only me, but all these people that are involved in here, and not knowing, you know, but we did get a letter, but you don't hear from nobody for a long time, and so I have kept in contact with Mike Barnett. He's uh, the Firm there in Farmville that is the. I, mean, I know. David Anasosa, right. And I have worried him today. If I worried Barry today, and I finally said, well, I thought there was somebody more important than him, so I called Mr. Bowles. But uh, we would hope that we was a very nice man, and he was a very nice. Man. But I just the county has gotten theirs today. How long can we expect before? Uh, <coughs> We hear something. Um, my guess is y'all hear something like I think there's going to be a news release maybe tonight or tomorrow, and so, and then that begins the process. But you know, 
Everybody needs to understand that once there's a project award, right, you just, it's not like you automatically get the check, right? You understand that. I know there will be a closing and... Right, and so I can tell you that... Well, there will be tons of paperwork. There's going to be some paperwork, yes. I think that what they mean by that is that, you know, if, say, if you received $5 and you were going to get $100, they would only give you 95 you know, instead of having to pay it back, they just wouldn't give you as much. And they are supposed to be fair market value before the flood of your home, is that correct? Roger that. And who will be um, um, saying how much your home is worth? The appraiser. Uh, an appraiser that y'all have chosen. We'll be working with the county. It'll be pretty much the county. You'll work all the way through it with the county. We'll work with the, the county too. But it's pretty much once the award is given, it's a, it's a county-driven process. So I think you're in pretty good shape. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. But what I would do is... Um, I'd just go check and make sure your name's on the list over there because I'd hate to be standing up here talking and all of a sudden, you know, it wasn't. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hey. My name is Gabrielle Ham. I'm a kindergarten teacher here in Goldsboro. Um, just real quick, I got married in June of 2016. We moved into our house and closed in August and made our first house payment the week of the Hurricane Matthew. So that was happy honeymoon stage for us. Um, basically, I just have a couple questions. Um, so Wayne County has been, we have our uh, God set, our God set, John Bell, Representative John Bell, he's out there. Um. There's been stuff about $60 million added to the budget, and what what is that going to do? How is that going to help us? So there's, out of the $60 million, $25 million is going to be for hazard mitigation. Okay. And so we will see some additional properties um, receive buyouts, elevations, and demolition rebuilds. Um, I was told when everything started, <clears throat> like the woman before me said, the pre-market value of your house. Um, I was told when talking to all those female representatives and all those people that if I had an appraisal since we bought the house a month before it happened, that I have an appraisal that's within six months, so that's going to stand true and I can just present that and that's pretty much what I'm going to get. Ma'am, I do not know, but the man that's sitting over there in the purple tie, he uh -huh. can probably answer that question. Okay. And I think what after saying that there's been so many hiccups and not knowing how to do this or it's a process and all this stuff. I think what we'd really like to know for the next time that it happens is how this is going to be better. Because that letter that we got out was a year. It was a year after it happened before we got any information. I mean just radio silence. And then almost another year before we get this next letter this week. I mean, how is this going to be better? How are we going to be involved in this process that is our lives? I mean, nothing. Even if we contacted people, no return on information. Nothing. I'm about I, to I, I can't attest to the people that you contacted because I don't know who they are and they you could. You were one of them. You were one of them. She personally and you gave I mean, no, no offense, but I have even. Uh, what? She contacted you personally. I'm her mother. You don't need to be I, mad at no, me here. No, no, I, this, no, 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 this is really sad because the day, at, the day of the hurricane, we got a call from her. Mom, there's water rising in our backyard. Okay, your dad's coming. For a hurricane, my husband had to drive to her house. He gets there. They're building moats. They're trenching. They're putting sandbags up. She comes outside a half hour later, 
half hour after my husband, 45 minutes after my husband's been out there doing this, he goes, get in that house, <coughs> pack a bag, get in your car, and get the hell out of here. They had less than 30 minutes to get out of the house. But 45 minutes later, their neighbor sends her a text. This is what your house looks like, underwater. Eight feet underwater. No answer. The next day, by the grace of family and friends, because her mother, she's not from here, she's a military child. We got stationed here. We retired here. She met a nice young man that's now living here. But his friends, his family, my husband and I, we're there the next bit, morning, bags, trash bags, taking out what we can take out. My daughter, two weeks before this hurricane, brand new furniture. These two young people, they're both, they're not rich by all means. He works for the city and parks and recs. She's a school teacher, which doesn't make much money here in North Carolina, unfortunately. So, they just buy brand new furniture. All their brand new furniture ruined. They were the only thing they were able to salvage out of that house was clothes. She had one pair of shoes that she was able to walk out of that house with. One pair of shoes. Everything else ruined. Some dishes that we were able to hurry up and get in the dishwasher. Amongst all the family and friends were there, they were washing clothes, doing dishes for two weeks, trying to salvage what they can. She contacted you personally her anytime she had a question that she can call you you have never once answered any of the sit you have never once I, I'm taking my three minutes no, you've no, never no, once no, answered any of her her questions call her back ma'am I'm not going to tell you yet. so please you do please something for that and your daughter can have three minutes y'all want her she has three minutes she can finish her three minutes so what question did you ask me? The, Just how is this process going to be different for the future? Got that process, and believe me, we, every every time we have a disaster, we try to you know we'll, we do an after action review, and do, we want to be better. Um, it's a big disaster. It's a large, complex event. Um, like I said, you saw where we provided assistance to 26,000 families, and so I've got less than 200 employees spread from you know the coast to the mountains. So we're doing the best we can, but we can do better. We realize that. Um, if you called me and asked me a question and I refused to answer you, I don't remember. I refused, but I, I just never received a response. Okay, and did you call me or? I called your office. Um, was transferred to your voicemail, was transferred to Nick Burke's voicemail. I sent you an email, and I think I got a response once from Nick Burke, but nothing. I mean, radio silence. After. Right. So I got no excuse. I'm not going to stand up here and make one, just tell you that, you know, it's, you know, I should have. I didn't. I'm, I apologize, but I'm not going to make excuses. That's just sometimes I get overwhelmed. Don't know when you did it. And, um, I'll try better next time. Thank you. I guess I, I'd like to talk. Um, my name is Elizabeth Penny, and I live in Seven Springs and uh, have lived in Seven Springs for 31 years. And um, I just kind of want to give you a background of what me and my family has been through since the flood. Um, me and my husband, and we have two small children children are, are currently living in a camper beside our damaged property and uh, has been living there for over a year. And um, we had tried multiple times trying to get our house uh, fixed because we, we didn't want to leave Seven Springs. We love Seven Springs. And it was uh, my grandmother's house um, we inherited. And um, what we started off, we got some and um, we had a bunch of help from the, the North Carolina Baptist Association. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to that man that was over here earlier. And um, we had begun working, and uh, we got stopped by the county saying that we would not be able to have our lights turned on, um, which is it's very confusing. I know you're probably not part of that, but um, 
It's been very confusing for us, and uh, we have taken into the buyout grant uh, program because of this. And uh, I just, I, I don't want to leave Seven Springs. I, I just don't understand um, what, is there anything being done to fix this problem, the flooding problem issue? Because I, I don't want to leave, but if it's going to continue to happen, I might as well get out now while I have the chance. But it's just, it's terrible to see of my family live in this house and nothing is being done to um, fix the problem that's <coughs> reoccurring. And um, I just, another uh, thing, I just want to make sure that I've got all of my uh, paperwork corrected and everything for this buyout program. But I just want to say that it is a shame that, that we can't come up with some kind of something to keep this from reoccurring. Something. And because uh, it's just it's terrible to see generations in a house just get torn down. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. And I just want to say uh, I feel for you. I understand it. Um, I believe that we are going to continue to see the weather like we've had it continue to get worse and um, it's just a fact of life but we have had a team of planners in Seven Springs you probably know about them um, we connected with Chapel Hill and NC State to stand there and um, to look at how we can make Seven Springs more resilient um, and so we're not giving up on that yes ma'am South John Street. Uh, when Matthew came, it came up in the house. We lost everything. If it hadn't have been for the National Guard and us grabbing some clothes, we'd have been naked. We have filled out the paperwork. We have been to FEMA. We went to W.A. Foster. The whole wilder was up there, did all this paperwork. Nothing. We have heard nothing. We have a house payment, flood insurance taxes, homeowners. We found a little house, we gotta pay rent. When we gonna get some help? That's what I want to know. When are the people here in Goldsboro gonna get some help? So, let me make sure I understand the question. Are you on the list for hazard mitigation property? My husband filled out whatever paperwork a lot of paperwork. We doubled. We've been had called back and had to go fill out some more paperwork. I guess what I'm asking is, have you been approved for a hazard we mitigation? We got anything. Okay. Nothing. And every time we would try to get in touch with Mr. Chip Crumpler, all we could get was a voicemail. Any answers? That's what we want to know. Twenty on. So it's kind of hard for me to give an answer without knowing all the details okay, and, and all the paperwork. But if you leave me your name and your contact number, unlike your daughter, I'll do my best to get back to her in a timely manner. And like I said, I apologize for that. Um, but that's the idea: is we want to want to make sure that we, you know, get an answer for you. Hey. I'm Gail Christian. My husband talked a little while earlier, and I just remember a question that we had been dealing with. Um, our home is right behind the hospital here in Goldsboro, and it's the second time we've been um, flooded. This time we've chosen not to build back. At this age, I don't want to go back to that again. I know it's going to happen again in the next five years. Um, the question is this time we have flood insurance. Um, an adjuster came, adjuster came to the house, and we were very pleased with how everything went, and we received money from but The first thing he told us was that we had to, not we should, but we had to tear out of the house four feet down. That if we did not, we would not receive any money from flood insurance. Flood insurance paid that, but our house has been condemned. It's on a concrete slab. I'm in the architectural field myself, so I know that that's not a house that could be elevated. It's got to be bulldozed first. 
as I said, we've chosen not to go out there and do that again. That was $20,000 in a check that they did send us, but that was down the drain. That was FEMA money because I'm assuming, and what I've been told is that flood insurance is through FEMA. It's just FEMA runs the National Flood Insurance Program. Yes. So that was money that you spent, your office, office, not you directly, but the office that you represent spent that went down the toilet. We paid the contractor to do that. But that was money that could have been in our pocket to have helped us. My question to you is, do we have any report? We have sent a letter to our insurance company asking them to appeal that. They wrote us back and said that they had paid the $20,000 to us, and that was all their responsibility was. But like I said, that was money that we could have used somewhere else to help with the financing of paying for that house and getting that mortgage off of our back. Is there anything else that we can do as a recourse for that? I, I can't answer that question. That I'm not spun up on insurance like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know generally about insurance, but I guess uh, they who told. Would you, who would you recommend that we contact? Them? Oh, I can get somebody. I, you know, and within my own agency. So if, leave the question, the name, and your contact information. Yes, ma'am. So I don't see anybody else up here, but now I do. <laughs> so we have a better understanding of what's happening with the money. Could you give us an overview of where the money goes when it comes into our state? In the paper, it said that the governor received a large sum of money. Has that amount of money been dispersed to the people that need it or used in any way? And who is responsible for taking care of seeing that all of these people get the things they need that they've been promised? And could they write letters to our insurance commissioner's office and complain about the insurance companies that are not paying? Certainly they could do that. Uh, I'll go backwards. But um, what I would tell you is that you're looking at the person that's responsible for ensuring that everybody gets what they're supposed to get. Me. You have the money in your hand and you do not have to have the governor sign off on every amount of money that goes out? It's, that would not, not be an accurate care. The way that it works is that there is funding available in federal accounts, okay? So for like the HUD money, it's in a system. It's called DRGR. And so when money is spent and they get documentation, then money gets reimbursed from the federal government. We have to turn it, when we get the, re, uh, the invoices, we have to turn it over to Commerce for their review, then they send it to uh, HUD and they'll pay out. So. It's not like the governor or myself are sitting on, we're not sitting on cash that we can just cut checks and send out. For FEMA funding, um, it's, in the, it's in a program called SmartLink. And once again, you have to, uh, it's, all these grants are reimbursement type grants. And so uh, people turn in um, invoices and we reimburse. And, and FEMA, we can generate quickly. Um, once this hazard mitigation program starts going through, you're going to see some issues, and you always do with title searches. And you know, a lot of properties are you inherit them, and sometimes the the titles it's pretty tough to figure out. And sometimes people like to appeal. Typically, from the beginning of the project to you know the end of it, where you get your check, is around uh, three to four months, and so. And that, you know, will happen like that. And so, but I'm not, I mean, there's money available in an account at federal level. Now, when I talk about the Disaster Recovery Acts, and somebody asked me about um, the 60 million, that money is at the state level. And so we have the opportunity to spend that rather quickly. And that's what we're using to spend on Disaster Recovery Act of 2017 for hazard mitigation, rehab, and, um, and repair. Is there any um, way of catching those, helping those people that 
fall through the cracks that do not have the money to um, take care of their personal needs at the time. So that can't spend and then give you receipts. So also there's an opportunity to maybe not, um, maybe to have an invoice, but if you expedite it quickly within 30 days, people can be reimbursed quickly. We do that often so that really no money is actually in these hands. Um, the other thing is, is for people that are falling through the cracks, that are, don't have a program that they think is, that they're eligible for, that's what we are supposed to work with, the long-term recovery groups, the case managers, the volunteer organizations, we, the whole community here. We all got to work together because I'm going to tell you something, your issue is different from her issue, is different from his issue. Everybody is unique. And um, I mean to tell you, everybody has a different story. And, um, and it's, it's a story that personally affects them in, in a bad way. And so that's what you have to do. You got to work at it until we figure out a solution for everybody. I understand that from HUD, they had earmarks that said that some of the money had to go for building shelters or cleaning out areas that would help prevent flooding. Has that been done and do you work with another department in order to handle that? So HUD does do that um, and they work through not DR money for that they work with CDBG money for that. There's two types of HUD fund and CDBG and CDBG DR. And so I've learned all this in the last year or so. So CDBG basically gets funded over to the Department of Environmental Quality where they uh, do those types of projects and to help make us more resilient against flooding. But it's not as much money as we have. Our money is more focused on people on people. And then the governor said in the paper yesterday, I guess it was, that there was grant money coming in. Who will be in charge of that grant money and what is that earmarked for? So I'm not sure exactly what he was talking about, but if it was, uh, I mean, all of this is grant money. So there's grant money from HUD, there's grant money for hazard mitigation. There's public assistance grant money. There's Homeland Security grant money. Me. So he could have been talking about. He's got, well, I saw a newspaper story today where there was opioid response grant money, a big, a big grant. I think it might have been in the paper or, or news release today. And so. so this was about the thing. Okay, it's about the Same. It was in the same article that talked about this meeting. Okay, well then that was probably the hazard mitigation grant funding. And I got to tell you, we are so happy that's finally coming. We've been working hard to get it. I know y'all are tired of waiting on it. And, you know, that's the grant money. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, okay. There's a couple of things. Um, oh, okay. The man in blue. Thank you, Director Sprayberry. Um, I owe you a personal apology. Um, my name is Paul Dunn. Uh, Director Sprayberry, I heard the question of asking how to expedite your help, and I can appreciate the, the passion. I'm a survivor of myself originally from Illinois County. When this gentleman uh, was kind enough and honored me to start with his initiative, the first ever disaster peace management program in the state of North Carolina, he walked up to me. He's a distinguished military man, a great leader, and I call him coach because he reminds me of my college coach. He looked me in the eye, he says, Paul, I need one primary thing from you, and that is to take care of our neighbors. I'm proud to say my team of 24 counties, 25 counties, we have helped or are helping over 1,500 families. But my apology to you and to Ms. Viola 
and uh, MHU, which is a manufactured housing unit, that she's frustrated. And um, for that, I apologize to you, Ms. Viola. I apologize to you. And um, I would like the opportunity to give out a number. Uh, another directive, uh, Director Strayberry came up with is a helpline. Um, he says, Paul, we need a place that people that have gone through, you have gone through, and make a phone call, give a name and number, and I want, he said, I want boots on the ground, meeting you face to face, helping you through the paperwork, connecting you with resources. We don't provide the resources, but we connect you with that. His compassion was frustration, trauma, help our neighbors. So if you will, I have flyers, and if you want to write down this number, we operate 24-7 live operator Monday through Friday. Uh, we have multi-languages, and uh, that number, and I'll repeat it, is 919-861. 2886, again, that helpline to get a, personal, a personally assigned case manager to help you is 919-861-2886. Again, I apologize to you directly in this Viola. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, what I was going to tell you all is that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here as long as you want me to. I am going to sit down in a minute, and uh, I'm because uh, I'm I'm bumping up on age 64, and when I start t standing for so long, I get a little tired myself. But um, what I what I wanted to tell you is that you know this is our passion. I mean, this is what I love doing. I used to, I was in the military for 25 years. I spent 25 years doing my best to try to get the other guy, right? But I got this job, and it's a much better job because it's about helping people. And um, I'm blessed to be able to be here to be with you people tonight. And I want to let you know that, you know, I saw the newspaper article where people were upset. And so I called uh, Mr. Honeycutt, and I, and I said, you know, I'll come down. I mean, that's not a problem. And you need to know that I'll come down anytime. And it doesn't have to be in a big meeting. It can be in a small meeting. If you just want to, if you want to holler at me, you got my number up there. And, you know, I got to tell you, I... You know, obviously, I'm not the fastest, and maybe sometimes never, like you say, on some responses. But I'm typically pretty good. You know, I'm tied. My wife will tell you I'm tied to a cell, two cell phones usually, and um, this means a lot to me. And, and I hope that you know you understand that. You know, I'm not just some fly-by-night guy that's here talking to y'all and and um, and just being saying whatever because it's not like that. We're dedicated. We want to make sure that you get the assistance that you need. Now, what he just told you about that, that helpline, master case manager, and so um, some of you know that the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? And so um, continue being squeaky. I got to tell you, I've got a couple of three pages I'm thinking over there of some work that we have to do in the next few days, but it ain't going to be over in this the next few days, right? This process is not going to be over for a long time. It's already gone on for a long time, but if you guys, the ones of you that got approved for a buyout, I mean, that process is ongoing. Um, you have a question about insurance. I, I really don't know how to answer that, and, and some other questions I don't know, but my commitment to you is that our team will do the best that we can. We've got a great team. I'm really proud of them. Um, we did we typically do really well, and um, but you can never be fast enough for somebody that got flooded out of a house. I mean, it's just not going to. I, I, there's no way here and make you feel good about the situation that you're in. So what we'll do, us, all of us, is working together. Is you'll keep me focused on. I don't ever, ever want to think you to think 
that Goldsboro and Seven Springs and Wayne County that you're forgotten because that's just not the case. Um, I've been down here a few, quite a few times and I'm sure I'll be down here some more. Um, so feel free to reach out. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna, in, in just a second, I'm gonna sit down here on the edge of the stage, but after the commissioner gets through talking, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, I'm willing to talk about anything. And um, I just wanna say how honored I am that you allowed me to come here tonight into your home and, uh, and to talk to you. And then I guess the, the test of how good we are is how well we'll respond to the items that you gave us. Um, and we'll make sure that that happens. But um, I just want to say before I stand, stand down here is that um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your, the valuable time out of your schedules to be here with me tonight. And um, I want you to be safe um, wherever you're going back home to. And I want to tell you that, you know, God bless each and every one of you. So thank you so much for your time. Roger that. Thank you, sir.